Hello, today is April the 10th, 2021. My name is Jose Rios. I'm interviewing Artur Rodriguez for the University Library Special Collection and Archives at the University of the Texas Rio Grande Valley. Hereafter, abbreviated as UCRGB. This project is in partnership with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Mr. Rodriguez, that this interview will be placed in the University Library Special Collection and Archives at UCRGB and shared with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there is something you want to talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. The univers uh, University Library Special Collection and Archives will archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documents you're willing to share. UTRGB University Library will, will retain copyright or non-exclusive right to the interview and any other material you donate to special collections and archives at UTRGB. Because we're not conducting this interview in person, I need to record you consenting to, to make sure you agree with our interview procedures before we continue. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say, yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each question. Okay, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, first question. Do you give uh, university library special collections and archives at UCRGV consent to archive your interview and your materials at the university library library? Yes, I agree. Do you grant UTRGB University Library Special Collection and Archives right to an interest in copyright or the interview and any material you provide? Yes, I agree. Do you agree to allow UTRGB University Library Special Collections and Archives to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes, I agree. Do you grant the University Library Special Collection and Archives consent to share your Zoom interview with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of the Pandemic Oral History mini project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? Yes, I agree. As you recall, we previously uh, filled out a pre interview form, we, we use information from the pre-interview form to help in research. And the entire form is kept in the Secure Voices server at the University of Texas Austin. Before Voices sends it, uh, uh, UTRGV University Library Special Collection and Archives, we will have stripped out any contact information for you, for yourself or family members so that we will not be part of your public your public file will only be accessible at UTRGB University Library. The final two questions ask for your consent on what I just described. Do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at UTRGB University Library Special Collections and Archives? Yes, I agree. On occasion, uh, UTRGB Special Collection and Archives and Voices receive requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with le uh, legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone numbers or your emails with journalists? Yes, I agree. Thank you for, consent, for your consent. Your experiences and stories mean a lot to us at UCRGV Special Collections and Archives. I look forward to what you say in the interview questions, I will now ask. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, thank you for participating in the Voices of the Pandemic Project. Your stories are very valuable for the UCRGV Special Collections and Archives. I am certain that your stories will be a great impact in the future because you have experienced the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on social life in the Rio Grande Valley. So before I ask you to share stories about your life in this pandemic, tell us who is Arturo Rodriguez? 
Um, this is I am Mr. Uh, Arturo Rodriguez, and I'm a I'm a teacher. I'm a musician, and I am a father of three kids, and my wife Felicia, the husband. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay, so the first questions. So the first question. Uh, the first question I want to ask you: When did you first hear about COVID nineteen? How did you learn about it? I mean, in the radio, TV, children, social media, where did you first hear about COVID? The first time I heard about it uh, was with my wife. Uh, she brought it up. She saw it in the news. And then um, I know around January before uh, we we uh, we got back, like after we got back from the Christmas break, uh, preparing for, for our January um, for the, the spring, um, teachers did bring it up in uh, in our meetings. So that's the first time that I heard about it. Okay. Um, what was your fir first reaction to the information about COVID-19? <clears throat> well, at first, um, when I first heard about it, I was like, uh, well, you know, it's, it's far away. And, uh, you know, I don't think we will get uh, affected by it. But uh, little by little, it started spreading. So that was my first reaction was that, you know, uh, it's, it's real far from home. So that was my first reaction. Okay. So at what time, at what point did you realize this pandemic was serious life altering event? Or do you think it's serious and why? Um, when I first realized that this pandemic was, was serious was when, uh, you know, it started hitting home. Um, you know, people uh, that you know or you know, um, you know, realizing realizing that it was getting closer uh, to home. So that's when I realized that you know this was serious, and uh, um, you know, that's that's when I first realized that it was it was serious. This pandemic was, you know, it was it was um, it was just getting closer and closer. So, uh, over the last few months, uh, what news, media, social media, or other sources do you rely on to keep you informed about uh, coronavirus? Um, for the most part, it's, you know, local news, um, also social media, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you share with me what uh, you understand about COVID-19 as a, an infectious disease? And any of its uh, variants, like why is, can you share with me what you don't understand about this new coronavirus? Uh, what I do understand about it, uh, for the most part, is that uh, it is, you know, infectious. That um, you know, normally the older, elderly, uh, you know, get uh, infected, and you know, could. Uh, become a big bigger problem if you are elderly also know that if you do get it you know people have different reactions to it um, like loss of smell loss of taste um, also um, that uh, with the I guess with the children they're they're not as affected uh, that much um, I know there's different variants of it um, but as far as like, you know, like what, what I know and about it, it, that's about what I know about it as of now. Okay, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, can you tell me uh, what you know about the various vaccines available to the public? How do you feel about these vaccines? Uh, I know there's a, there's a Johnson, there's a the, the Pfeiffer, and then there's, a, I think there's another one. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but what I do know is that um, uh, you get your first dose and then you wait um, two weeks, you get the other dose for the, the Pfizer. Uh, the Johnson, it's um, a one-time dose. And I know that the, the Pfizer is uh, a little bit more effective than the Johnson. So that's uh, that's what I know about the... the I know also that that um, there's, there's some people that do get... Um, I get uh, symptoms uh, after the vaccine. So that's what I know about that. Okay. 
do you have any, uh, a vaccination story you would like to share with me now or perhaps later in the, this interview? Uh, vaccination. Well, I got I, I got vaccinated um, the end of February, and uh, it was during the freeze, and I had to uh, wait in line, uh, you know, trying to get vaccinated. So uh, I did. I do remember that it was super cold and waiting. People waiting in line uh, to get vaccinated. So that was my first. Uh, well, that's my memory of, of vaccination. Um, I didn't get any symptoms or anything, but there was there was quite a bit of people uh, wanting wanting the vaccine, and you know, uh, getting in line for it. Okay. Uh do your family members hold the same beliefs as you about COVID-19 or are there some who take it more seriously or lightly? Uh, everybody in, in my, I guess in my close family do uh, have the same beliefs as far as, you know, um, the COVID, you know, that it's, it is a serious, um, it is a serious uh, thing that we need to take care of. Uh, so we do feel that, you know, we both, everybody shares the same, the same um, beliefs with it. Okay. Uh, for this next uh, set of questions, I would like to talk about the impacts of the pandemic on your family and people you work with. Uh, the first question is, can you share with me a little about your family? For example, how many members do you have? If you have uh, children, are they in school? Okay, so um, a little bit about my family is uh, well, I my my parents, both of them, uh, they come from Mexico and they uh, they brought us here when we were younger. Um, I do have a brother and a sister. Um, so I'm, I am the oldest. Um, I am married with my wife Felicia, and we have three kids. And uh, uh, one of them is at school uh, virtually at the moment. One of them is uh, the middle daughter is supposed to start in, in the, the fall. And I have a newborn uh, baby, uh, three months old. Okay. Uh, what is it like to be a father during the pandemic to, your, uh, to young children? Um, it, it was a, a big challenge, you know, um, you know, being with them every day, um, you know, just, you know, keeping, keeping them fed, uh, doing the daily activities, uh, with them. But at the same time, it was, uh, rewarding, you know, just seeing them grow and spending time with them. Uh, so that's, uh, something, um, as a father, you know, um, during the pandemic that, um, that I could remember. You think, um, the next question, I think you already answered the, the, the next question was, can mm -hmm. you share with me some of your, uh, more concerning moments of parenting your children, like difficult times? Yes. Well, um, difficult time would be like, you know, like their birthdays. Um, I know we had to do like drive by, uh, birthdays celebrations you know um they were used to having you know their fam our family clothes and um their their parties and you know them asking you know that they want to go out somewhere and they couldn't uh so that was that's something that i can share about you know about that um but something uh Fun moments, I guess, uh, will will be just you know just spending time with them, and um, so yeah, just just uh, spending time with them, watching them grow, and um, you know the, the happy moments is you know they're just family time for the most part. Okay, perfect. It's interesting. Um, so, how did this, uh, did the pandemic impact family traditions, customs, and holiday celebrations? Like for example, did you celebrate birthdays uh, and Christmas differently? Do you have any like uh, traditional Thanksgiving or how did this uh, change? Okay, well, traditions, uh, I mentioned birthdays were different. Um, 
holidays. Uh, I know we we did not meet uh, for Thanksgiving for a lot of the birthdays. Um, Christmas, uh, I if I remember correctly, uh, we kind of just met our intimate family. Um, actually, we we didn't even meet for Christmas. No, so we didn't meet for Christmas either. Um, because I was working and I didn't want to get nobody infected. Um, so, um, so like, for example, like Thanksgiving, we, we did not meet and for Christmas either. So, uh, yeah, we, we didn't do none of that. Oh, okay. So, uh, I know, uh, you're a musician, uh, but, uh, apart from being a musician, did you attend any weddings or graduations, funerals? And uh, how did you see those, if you attended some of those uh, before the pandemic and after, was there a difference? Yes, um, I, I do uh, have a, my, my wedding quinceanera band uh, that, that we do play. I know we're going to talk about it later, but um, I did attend weddings before and after. Uh, they were different in size and, you know, wearing masks and stuff for sure was uh, here in the Valley was um you know everybody wears them um graduations i did not attend any but i did attend funerals during uh, the pandemic they were um smaller uh, just intimate family um so that was um that was different you know the you know attending funerals um how does it make how, how these uh different from you know before is you know well, well Usually, those in like in funerals, you usually have all your family or close family, but now it was just uh, the intimate family uh, that was involved in the funerals. Um, I did uh, perform um, for funerals uh, for one funeral that I do play. I did play. It was a um, elderly woman that from church that I that I played. And they, her family, they wanted me to to play perform for her her uh, funeral, and again it was just intimate family, and um, there was nobody in the choir. It was just me playing piano and singing, and that's it. So, those are the I guess the events that I attended before and after the pandemic. Okay, okay, Mr. Rodriguez, going back to uh like uh close family uh i know you mentioned in the pre-interview that uh you have three daughters and the, the youngest one was born during the pandemic how different was the childbirth of your youngest daughter compared to the oldest one regarding like the safety protocols implemented in the hospitals because of the pandemic was there like a, a lot of difference Yes, um from 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 my three kids uh this one was totally different um, I wasn't able to attend any of the doctor's visits. Um, none of them, actually. Uh, the only one I was able to do was uh, the 3D ultrasound um, when it was um, when she was already like nine months. So uh, as far as like doctor's visits, I, w I wasn't able to attend none of those. Once, uh, once uh, labor started, uh, hospitals were different. They... Um, Again, it, it, I was the only one allowed inside. Um, as far as protocols, uh, you know, my wife did have to take a COVID test before and uh, myself as well. And um, there was nobody allowed in the hospital. It was just me and uh, nurses and doctors. And uh, I, they did have to take temperature and um, I wasn't allowed to leave the hospital uh, to the very... Uh, till we all left with the baby, so it was uh, it was it was big difference. So I did have to eat uh, the food from um, the hospital as well. I couldn't leave to go eat or anything. Um, as far as my clothes, also I had I could only take the clothes and I couldn't go out for anything. So that was a big difference as far as uh, you know the new baby. So it <laughs> it was really different. Okay, yes, uh, I can imagine it's something different. Okay, uh, your perspective, how do you think the pandemic impacted your wife's pregnancy? I mean, did she share some of your similar concerns before and after the youngest was born? I and mean, how did she feel? 
Um, I mean, um, like how, how did I feel the perspective? I mean, she did think, you know, that that it was important to, you know, to take all the precautions uh, because nobody knew like what will happen, you know, with if you get COVID and you're pregnant and. So we did uh, take care of ourselves as far as, you know, uh, isolating and not attending a lot of functions and just going to the store, maybe one of us. And and then, uh, so, um, you know, it, it, this pandemic did impact, you know, the pregnancy, you know, um, she did get a lot of anxiety uh, because for the same thing, just being home all day. Um, so th that was, uh, you know, really different uh, with this new new baby, with the youngest one. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay. So uh, the following questions are focused on your experiences as a musician and music teacher during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the mm -hmm. first question, uh, how long have you been working as a musician and what instruments do you play? Uh, I've been a musician uh, most of my life. I started uh, uh, learning the, the piano when I was uh, like seven years old. Uh, as far as uh, being a musician, uh, like I started when I was like in my teenager years, uh, maybe 16, 17. And uh, instruments, I can play the drums, the piano, trombone. I sing, I do a little bit of guitar. Uh, pretty much uh, um, those around the, that area. So um, yeah, that's um, that's about me and my musician life. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, what is the name of your group and how did you come up with the name? Um, the, my, my, the name of my band is called Latin Vibe uh, or like I guess our real name, our official name is Latin Vibe Show Band. Uh, you know, we came up with this name when we were out of high school. A couple of buddy mine just got together, and um, we just wanted something that uh, that was different. That uh, you know, that just people knew who we were just with the name. Something that is catchy, and something that you know people can can remember us. So. That was, that's how we kind of came up with a name. Okay. Uh, does your group have a like a website? How do you promote your uh, your group? Yes, we do have a website. Uh, for the most part, uh, it's uh, Uh We promote our the band usually with Facebook. We do have our Facebook page, and we do have our YouTube page, and that's how we really. Uh, I guess, promote the band uh, for our clients. Okay, and uh, what type of music does a Latin Vibe band play? Uh, Latin Vibe, we cater to, to family events for the most part. Um, you know, we do weddings, quinceaneras, we do um, some special, um, like posadas uh, during the Christmas. Uh, we do Christmas parties for companies. Um, we do, you know, galas. Uh, we do pretty much anything, birthday parties, two sixteens. So that's that's where we cater. Okay. Uh, the type the type of music. Well, we we play pretty much everything, variety. Uh, you know, English, Spanish. Okay. So, uh, do you only perform here in the Rio Grande Valley or in other cities across the state of Texas? Uh, we've been, uh, we've been performing for around 15 years already. And, uh, we've had, a uh, uh, when we first started, um, we did, uh, travel to, to Mexico a couple of times, but for the most part, we just, uh, play here in, in, in the, in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, I want to say maybe, um, maybe around, uh, three to five times, uh, we do travel, outside the area, uh, but mostly into the San Antonio, Houston, Austin area. Okay, so it's mainly here in the Rio Grande Valley. Mainly, yes. Okay, so um, how many performances uh, were you doing before the pandemic on average each month, more or less? 
Uh, monthly, um, it, it, it varies. Uh, there's because there are some months that are, I guess, they're more, um, more popular to have events like in December. But for the most part, we will have maybe around from from four to six events uh, a month uh, for an average. Oh, okay, that's an average. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so how did the pandemic uh, impact your job? Was there like a point last year when you went weeks without playing a gig? Yes, uh, we actually uh, started getting affected the end of March when uh, everything kind of shut down. Um, you know, a lot of rescheduling, um, weddings and quinceaneras, you know, not knowing what, what was going to happen because every, everything was new. So we did um, experience a, a lot of um, uh, postponing events and, um, you know, um, so yes, I mean, we, I want to say from March to June, uh, we, we did not play. And then we did when everything kind of opened up again in the beginning of June, we started having a few events again and then shut down again. And we really didn't have events till like November. So that's when everything kind of, you know, started picking up again. Okay. So it really affected your the performance? Yes, it, it did affect it. Yes, it did affect it. Uh -huh. Okay. So... Um, I read the, that some musicians were able to make money by uh, live streaming their performances during the pandemic. Did you all use technology in new ways to keep performing during the pandemic? Yes. Um, um, during the pandemic, well, we were mostly musicians were, were not fortunate to, you know, play for, uh, play live uh, at any bars or any, um, uh, Uh, weddings, quinceaneras. So they uh, they started experimenting a lot with uh, technology. Uh, I know we as a band uh, we did uh, we did get better and uh, did a lot of uh, YouTubing and and um, learning new ways of using technology. Uh, a lot of it has to do with video editing because um, you know we had to show what we do. And we try to, you know, uh, have those live live concerts. I know we we had one for like a we had like a Hollywood one. We did have a uh, uh, we had like two or three uh, using technology. So it was a uh, uh, eye opener uh, for everybody, uh, all musicians, using technology uh, to showcase our our talent. Okay. Um, tell me uh, about when your requests for for performances started to increase again. When was uh, this, and how did y'all feel? Like when did it started picking up again? Uh, it started picking up around November, um, and um, you know we haven't really really stopped performing from November and on. Uh, I think it had to do with you know people just realizing. You know that they have to get their mass and and uh, you know uh, keeping our elderly uh, inside and not uh, you know not them going out as much. So uh, that's when it kind of picked up. It was around November. Okay. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, I mean, in uh, what events uh, did you all play? Was there something different? Like, uh, did you perform like in funerals or? something somewhere else that you would like to uh, share your stories about uh well for the most part um we do i mean most of our events were were the same uh quinceaneras weddings uh something different was uh performing at those drive-by birthday parties so i know we had uh maybe one or two that i can recall no two of them uh that uh you know instead of them performing for uh people at at their home at their venue Uh, we will set up outside and then people would just drive by and they will hear us perform while they were driving. So that was, uh, I guess, different um, during the pandemic. Okay, I know this is uh, in the band and uh, I know, uh, I mean, it consists of uh, 
many members. Uh, tell me about the band members. Did any did any of them contracted COVID? And uh, I mean, did you all take any precautions, like well, in a mm -hmm. in a performance? Well, there's there's a lot of people involved in the band in in my band. Uh, we're we're ten in the band, and I want to say from the people from the ten people in the band, um, I want to say, I want to say like maybe from the ten six got COVID. Um, I was lucky enough not to get it, but I know. Um, uh including my brother that's uh he's one of he's part of the band he did get it and uh, so it did affect us um you know having events trying to get people to sub uh because they were infected um so uh it it uh it did uh affect us that way um so uh yeah so i want around six six out of the ten um that's not counting people in in our crew then that also got infected, but just the band members, uh, it was around six. Okay. And uh, I mean, after knowing this, that uh, some of your uh, band uh, members got infected, uh, did you feel the need to self-quarantine after performance at some point? Yes. Um, actually, um, two, of my, two of the band members that got it, uh, got it around December, and um, we did uh, take a precaution as far as like getting tested uh very um various times i know um after uh, my brother got infected i had to go and get a covid test because i had my wife that was pregnant and kids and uh was everybody so everybody in the band uh once we found out that somebody got infected we all had to you know get a covid test making sure that we were safe uh, for our families so uh, we did, uh, you know, wear masks at our events. Um, so I know your other questions talk about like, what do other people do? But for the most part, we did try our, our best to, you know, uh, wash your hands, sanitize, six feet apart. Um, after our performances, go straight and shower, you know, wash your clothes. And, and that's about it. Okay. I, I know you mentioned before, uh, that your brother is placed in the band and uh, also in the pre-interview, uh, you said that your father was also, did also help you in the band. Uh, how did they handle the situation? I mean, it, well, I, as far as, uh, yes, as far as my, my dad, uh, he, he stopped attending. Um, he will help us out, like passing cards and, and uh, things like that. But he did stop attending the, the events uh, till he got the vaccine. Uh, as far as my brother, um, he also, he, his wife was also uh, pregnant. He had just had the baby, actually. Uh, he had the baby in November, and he got uh, COVID in December. So uh, it was tough on him because he had a newborn, and his wife had just had a, the baby, and he couldn't see the baby. So it, uh, it was really, really hard on them for um, around 15 days. So, um, you know, it, it, um, it was, it was different. And, uh, I mean, he did quarantine and he did not, uh, attend, uh, several of our performances, uh, for that reason. So, um, that was different. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, like you mentioned, uh, that you're a teacher and, uh, I mean, also a musician, but are there any like men, uh, band members that only, uh, depend on the on the band for a living and how did the pandemic affect their life did they have to work uh, somewhere else or they just uh, uh waited well uh we're fortunate enough that uh most of the most of the band members do have their uh, their uh their daily job i guess like myself but um not just the members got affected if not uh i guess the people that got affected the most were people that work for the band like the crew the crew and the engineers um uh, that you know they started ha having to look work somewhere else um so other jobs were you know uh, playing with other bands um uh, working with live streams uh i know my sound engineer does a lot of church work 
So I know the church was also having a lot of um, issues with, you know, you know, having, having people over. So uh, I know my engineers did do, uh, they did experiment a lot with live streaming uh, the event. So people did, did do, did go different separate ways as far as, you know, um, have having some kind of an income that they were um, used to. Okay. And uh, going back to the performances, uh, what would you think while performing at a wedding or a quinceanera if guests uh, were not wearing their masks in social or they were not social distancing? Did you see a lot of older gente like tios, uh, abuelos, abuelas? At events during the pandemic, like not social distancing or uh, uh, wearing their face masks uh, at the events. Well, um, there there was um, I, I know here in the in the Rio Grande Valley, people uh, for the most part wear their masks. Um, I know the event that my, that we had in Houston, no people were wearing masks, so it was really different. Um, I don't know if it's a, a culture thing, or um, um, I guess uh, their their views were different, or maybe a lot of them just got it and they thought, well, I don't need to wear my mask. I already got COVID. I'll, I'll be fine. So um, you know, they as far as weddings and um, you know pe people taking precautions, um, I did see barrooms that were doing their part as far as you know. You know the, I guess the people involved in in the kitchen wearing masks, sanitizing. Um, you know they will put the tables separate, uh, six feet apart. Um, hand, hand sanitizing. Um, you know taking temperatures before entering the the building. So uh, as far as you know, event centers they did do their part, but you know having uh, alcohol doesn't really help um you know keeping the masks on especially when you know they're they're under the influence of alcohol so people will start with the mask and by the time you know it you know they're all hugging and celebrating so um that's usually what will happen um that what we'll see you know people will start with the mask and then towards the end of the night they will just stop using it um so we also experience outside weddings um that they were different uh, more outside weddings uh, for the same reason for COVID and smaller events. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, yes, like you mentioned, I mean, you're uh, also a music teacher. So the next set of questions, um, now let's talk about your experience as a music teacher during the pandemic. Um, and now tell me about your life as a music teacher. Where do you, uh, where do you work and how long have you been working there? I've been at my current um, job for four years. Uh, my job description is a uh, music teacher, um, pre-K to fifth grade. And, um, you know, uh, I teach um, during this regular school year. Um, I have all grade levels once a week. And well, I just teach them the, the joy of music and um, a little bit of, you know, um, recorder, ukulele, mostly singing and um, music with, with games. Okay. Um, how did the pandemic affect your normal routine as a music teacher? Well, as a music teacher, we had to uh, find new ways to, uh, to engage the students uh, learning a lot of technology. Um, a lot of researching, a lot of, um, I guess, finding new ways to to interact uh, with 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 your students, keeping them engaged, is was the biggest uh, challenge, not just for teachers but for students as well. Um, you know, being in the computer all day also was a challenge. Um, so yes, that that was I guess the biggest uh, change as far as being a music teacher, um, you know, just interacting and uh, in music, you know, singing is really important at a small 
uh, their age and uh, well, we couldn't do any of that. So I had to find other ways of doing music lessons that would involve technology. Okay. Uh, did your school district provide you with the remote teaching trainings? If so, how were you trained, prepared for remote teaching over the summer of uh, 2020 when everything started? I mean, did they give you trainings? Yes, uh, uh, I worked for La Jolla ISD and uh, there was a lot of trainings provided uh, for teachers. You know, um, I know I did attend several, um, you know, especially the, the Google uh, trainings. Um, there's, you know, there's a bunch of trainings that they, they were providing. And, uh, you know, a lot of the teachers were taking advantage of these uh technology courses, um, you know, because they knew what was coming, um, you know, having, especially the uh, elderly teachers that were not used to technology, they did, uh, they did go to all these, uh, these, uh, I guess, meetings and, and, uh, um, you know, just trying to get better as teachers. Okay. okay. Um, so I know, I mean, there's a lot of uh, setbacks uh, during the pandemic, but, uh, did you find any uh, positive things about teaching students music uh, remotely? Is there something positive about it? Um, I mean, the only positive thing I I think was you know uh, kids experimenting uh, applications um, to learn. Um, that's uh, that's I think the the only benefit. Uh, that I see uh, with music in elementary, a lot of it is hands-on, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of music games, a lot of dancing, a lot of uh, playing instruments. So, um, you know, you know, taking all that away from, from the kids uh, for music was, it was different. So a lot of the, the only way for us to experiment and learn about music was through te technology pretty much. Um, I did have to, um, you know, do a lot of um, changing as far as like learning rhythms and uh, instead of using uh, drumsticks, for example, the kids will, will use pencils. Instead of uh, drumming on an actual drum, they will use a table in front of them. A lot of body percussion, you know, moving their, their bodies, uh, a lot of clapping. Uh, so that was the only way for us to really um, experience the music uh, and feeling the music and, and learn a little bit virtually. So it, it was a, a big change. And, yes, uh, big change. Mm -hmm. So uh, between your two professions, uh, which one do you think was affected the most by the pandemic as a musician or uh, as a music teacher? Uh, I think uh, equally they were they were both affected uh, the same. Um, I know um, they they were both uh, sorry they were both um, they were both imp impacted. I think pretty much the same. Um, you know, um, I think you know overall I think being a teacher was was different, but also the you know the the whole wedding a scene was was a big change i think for the most part i think they were both affected equally okay mr rodriguez so uh now to close i'll ask you some final questions um mm -hmm. are, are you satisfied uh with the local response to covid19 like uh, where you live in McAllen and uh, hidalgo county have they done something about it yes i think uh you know uh when everything was was um starting and, and uh, having the curves and all that, I think uh, for the most part, uh, everything was new for everybody. So um, yes, I, I think uh, as far as Hidalgo and, and uh, McAllen, I think they did their part. They, they tried their best to, to make things, you know, easier for, for us to understand, um, you know, the local news, everything. I think they did a great job as far as keeping us informed. Uh, you know, I know a, a lot of Hidalgo, you know, helping the community with food and resources for the community. Also, I think they did, they did a great job. 
Okay. Now, um, and uh, are you satisfied with the with the state response to COVID nineteen uh, led by Governor Abbott here in Texas? I I think I think he, he I mean the same thing. I think he just he he's trying to you know. There's a lot of people involved during this pandemic. You know, when you're talking about the people and and uh, as a customer and also as business owner, owners, um, you know, having that balance. I think he did. I think he did okay as far as you know, trying to do the right thing. I think he did. He did a good job. Okay, and uh, and are you satisfied with the uh, with the current national response uh, led by President Biden and his uh, administration? Yes, uh, as far as you know, getting uh, everybody vaccinated. I think he he's trying to you know just push it. You know, tr trying to get everybody vaccinated. So. Um, Uh, as far as uh, that is concerned, I think he, he's doing a great job. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez. Uh, uh, if you had the power to respond to COVID-19 with uh, policies, laws, or workplace uh, decisions, what would you do differently, if anything? I mean, any ideas, any, how will you do different? Um, I mean, everybody has their, their I guess, their your motives of doing things. But I think, uh, I mean, everything was just so new to everybody that, you know, um, I mean, I, I think just getting everybody the word out, you know, to, uh, you know, to stay safe indoors, um, keep people, you know, um, informed of the facts, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I think everybody, you know, I think everybody was was pretty much informed. So I mean, doing something differently, I think it's it will be something out of my league. Uh, but uh, I think I think uh, everything the way there's been doing, I think everybody's been, you know, doing a great job about it. I don't think I will be able to do anything differently because I, just, I mean, my my expertise is is totally different. Uh, Uh, or my beliefs, uh, you know. So uh, as far as doing something different, I, I think we we'll just I would just follow um, the protocols. Okay, sir. So uh, okay to wrap up uh, everything. Uh, are there any other stories or experiences that you would like to share with me that I have not asked about? I don't know any different stories. Um, different stories. In regarding the uh, pandemic, I mean, that that you have experienced in your life. No, I mean, um, I mean, you pretty much touched most of it. Um, you know, uh, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, for the most part, we, you know, we talked about, you know, the the school, the way schools were. My being a musician, um, using technology. Um, I think you hit all the the right questions um the family you know how everything was with the family so i think you did a, a good overall um interview okay uh thank you uh thank you uh mr rodriguez uh for participating in the uchrgv voices oral history project um your stories will be uh, preserved as a valuable jewel for generations to come and uh, i mean your stories are really uh, valuable for the project and I mean, for future generations. So I really thank you for your time and uh, yes, and anytime. thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I guess this is it. After this, it'll be uh, fixed. So okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, for your time. I really appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye.